Hello everyone, welcome to Accurate Planning Part 1, uh, the first video of a series of videos on topics related to production planning. Let's get started. Accurate planning, which is often referred to as macro planning, uh, centers on this basic idea. How can a company best utilize its facilities and resources to satisfy forecast demand? Um, Area planning starts with the premise that you have some reliable forecasting method to predict demand. Um, based on that forecast demand, how can you allocate your resources, such as your production capacity, your worker hours, machine hours, etc., so that you create the best production plan to minimize costs or maximize profits? Um, it's the process to determine the level of capacity, production, subcontracting, inventory shortages, and pricing over a specified time horizon. The goal is always to profit maximize or uh, minimize cost. Um, and the outputs of our plan are usually um, very, very useful for any management trying to um, plan ahead. Um, and then the time frame is typically from short to intermediate time frames. Here is a simple demonstration. Let's say we have a manufacturer that produces product A. Uh, we have a forecast of the, for the next six months given here, um, also plotted to the right. Um, this is what the forecast demand looks like. We know this is not exactly what's going to happen, but management must decide what the production is actually going to look like so that um, it matches this um, projected demand as close as possible in a way that minimizes cost or maximizes profits. Um, so in other words, um, what should the production plan look like? Um, so one possible scenario is you produce the same amount every single month, so like a flat you know, horizontal line. Maybe that's the correct production plan. Uh, maybe we set the production plan so that it matches um, this projected demand exactly. But we know this is just the forecast. It's going to be, it's not going to be correct. Um, but it does this result into the best outcome. Or maybe it's completely something different where the production plan actually calls for a lot of production earlier on, but then a decrease later on. Um, this may be the best forecast, best, best production plan. Agri plan should tell us if indeed uh, which alternative is the best. If we look at production planning broad, um, the main objective is to assess our needs. Um, what type, how many people do we need? What type of equipment do we need? Do we need more machine time, etc.? What do we need to meet our production plans? Um, what are my options? Um, what is my anticipated work size for a given period? Do we need more next month? Do we need more? Do we need to hire more people for next month? Should we use overtime instead? Should we outsource some of our production um, next month or two months from now? Um, what equipment do I need? Should I modify existing ones? Should I buy a new one? Should I just subcontract the entire process? Um, how much inventory should be held? Um, how much should I pre-build and hold that inventory, which is going to incur me cost? Um, we, need, we know we're going to have excess capacity at some periods where the demand is a lot lower, but we have extra capacity. Uh, so should we build the extra units and hold them so that when we have excess demand, we can deploy those excess uh, excess um, units rather than trying to increase capacity at the last minute. Here's a very simple example that demonstrates one possible case where agro planning may be very, very useful. Um, this is an article back in late November of 2014 from the Wall Street Journal. The article talks about some of the struggles that UPS and FedEx experienced uh, because of change in demand. So for those in the US, UPS FedEx is probably the most visible and um, well-known delivery companies in the US. Typically in the US, there's more demand for deliveries as we get closer to Christmas, so late December. Uh, because, but because of on more online shopping, um, these delivery companies have seen higher demand uh, much earlier on. Um, so they were actually caught off guard when they saw a huge increase in demand the week after Thanksgiving. So for those in the U.S., you also know that 
you know, Thanksgiving is the fourth Thursday of every November, and the day after Thanksgiving, often referred to as Black Friday, there's a lot of shopping activities. Um, and delivery companies were caught off guard when they saw a huge increase in delivery um, the demand the week after. Um, as a result, the online delivery rates fell short of their goals. Um, this is a big problem for UPS and FedEx because these are their service measures. Um, as a result, uh, fast forward a year later, uh, UPS added more shifts of employees and added new trailer spots. So in, in anticipation of this greater demand. So now let's, let's summarize what UPS actually did for the next holidays. Um, or there's some other actions. The workforce option, they increased their capacity, they added 49 new shifts of employees, uh, new or modified equipment, they added 900 new trailer spots as, as its main air hub um, so that they can meet the increase in demand towards the late uh, November period. So if you want to perform aggregate planning, we need to gather a lot of pieces of information. First of all, we need good forecasts. So you, we need some type of uh, a good forecast method to predict demand. Um, once we have that, we also need um, some of the other um, constant um, input parameters such as the labor and machine hours required per unit. So you kind of assume that these are fixed and don't change uh, for a given period. Um, we also need the cost parameters, uh, the labor costs, for example, the difference between the regular labor, hour, labor cost per hour versus an overtime. Um, you know, what is that cost per hour? Um, the cost for subcontracting, does it cost anything to change capacity? So do we hire and fire workers? If we add more machines for production line, um, what are the costs for holding inventory? Um, inventory holding costs, it's not free to hold excess inventory. So what is that cost? Are there any costs for stocking out or, by, uh, or backlog costs? If a customer walks away empty handed, what type of cost does that incur us? Um, and eventually, we got to turn all of these things into constraints when we formulate the aggregate plan problem. Once we have created an aggregate plan and actually ran the optimization, what are some of the outputs? So what do we really gain from an aggregate plan um, exercise? Uh, we will first know the production quantity from regular overtime production. The plan should tell us how many units should we use, how many, how many units should we produce from regular production or overtime production or both? Um, what are the production quantities from those two types of um, th types of labor? Um, so this should tell us then the number of workers and subcontractors we would need for a given period. Um, we also the agriculture should also tell us the correct level of inventory level or the best level best inventory levels in terms of cost. This should tell us then what type of warehouse space we would need, also the working capital, so that we can um, achieve those inventory levels. Um, we would also know the stock out backlog loss sales quantity. Um, so this kind of captures the level of customer service we would achieve if we were to follow the aggregate plan. Um, we should also tell us, um, do we need to increase or decrease capacity? Um, do, we need to, do we need more fuel workers in the upcoming month? Uh, do we need to add more or less machine capacity, et cetera? Um, so in the next video, um, in order to for us to actually pursue aggregate planning, we need a little refresher on linear programming. So the next video will cover a very small example and we would, and then we will tackle a bigger uh, agri-planning problem um, on the third video. Thank you.